with NBC News correspondent Robert Bazell. Hello from Cape Canaveral, Florida, where in a few minutes the Space Shuttle Challenger will land on the concrete runway here at the Kennedy Space Center, a short distance from where it took off into space eight days ago. On its return from orbit this morning, the Challenger passed over the American Midwest and Southeast because of an orbit which took it much farther north than most shuttle flights. With me now is astronaut Ron Gravy. Hello, Ron. Hello, Welcome Bob. again. We have pictures of the Challenger. I think we should take a look at those right, right away. What's happening right now in the cockpit? Well, What's right, Robert Crippen, the commander, doing? Right now, Bob, Bob Crippen has the Challenger in a gentle left turn to align himself with the runway. He's descending in a fairly steep dive, and he's looking for the visual aim point about a mile short of the runway. Now, this is Robert Crippen's fourth shuttle flight. He's uh, been the commander on three. Is this a tense moment for him, or is it getting pretty routine? Well, it's probably getting a little more routine than the first time he went up, but I'm sure he's still very excited about it. We should point out, and as we always do on shuttle landings, that the, the shuttle is a glider when it comes back from space. They only have one chance. There's no engine. If something goes wrong, uh, they, there's no way to correct the mistake. Uh, now, what's what's going on now? What will be the next thing? They see the runway now, I presume. They're coming in. They He's got the runway end in sight. Uh, 2,000 feet above the ground, he'll start breaking his dive and transitioning into a nice gentle flare for the landing. We should point out that the runway here at the Kennedy Space Center is cut through a very thick swamp. And this morning, there were helicopters and patrols out there chasing away alligators, wild boars, armadillo, and other creatures that might come on the runway. That can be a serious problem that actually could interfere with the landing. But, of course, they don't see any any creatures out there right now that might uh, hurt anybody, but they do have to watch for that. This has been a very successful mission uh, of the shuttle, the, uh, including a spacewalk, the first by an American woman that took place on Thursday that provided us with some spectacular pictures. We can see the shuttle Challenger overhead with our eye as well as with the cameras here. It's making a very steep descent. It drops almost like a rock, doesn't it? Well, it's coming down pretty fast, Bob, and now it's about the point where he's transitioning into a gentle flare for the landing. See a very pretty shot of the runway, as I said, cut through the swamps of Florida. Passing over the Indian River there. The wheels should be coming down shortly. There they are. A beautiful touchdown. With just about right exactly, to me. Exactly, Bob. Looks beautiful. Nose gear comes down next. Uh, the nose gear is down, and that's it. He's got a long rollout ahead of him here, Bob. He won't be too anxious to get on the brakes. We've got 15,000 feet of runway available. Did you see anything, anything wrong with that landing no, at all? No, it looked exactly as we say, nominal. <laughs> Now, we should point out that this was the largest crew ever to go into space together, seven people, five men and two women, and among the men was a Canadian, the first Canadian to join the American space program, and uh, two women, including Sally Ride, making her second trip into space. Now, how much longer will the astronauts have to be out there before they uh, get a chance to It'll come out? It'll probably be about another 30 minutes or so before they actually exit the orbiter. The next thing that will happen here is the Challenger has now come to a complete stop and a convoy of vehicles, we should see them, they're starting to make their move right now, goes out towards the Challenger. The first thing they want to check for is any leak of dangerous fumes or anything to make sure that it is safe. That's right, Bob. We do ca carry some hazardous toxic uh, fuels on board the orbiter and the purpose of that convoy is to ensure that there are no leaks. Okay. So we had a very successful conclusion to this mission uh, that went very well indeed. With Ron Gravy, I'm Robert Bazell, NBC News, Cape Canaveral. This has been an NBC News report. We now join our regular program schedule. Amazing is becoming routine for the Challenger, with new flights planned about once a month. NBC News science correspondent Robert Bazell reports from Cape Canaveral, Florida. At midday, Challenger swept south over the United States toward the landing site in central Florida, where there was not a cloud in the sky. The spaceship, returning from eight days in orbit, dropped over the swamps and rivers at the Kennedy Space Center and touched down on the concrete runway. It was a perfect landing. Touchdown. The largest crew in the history of space flight is home. Here's the Challenger where we'll stop. The seven-member crew, five men and two women, emerged happy and fit after a mission that was mostly successful. The Challenger appeared in good shape except for some debris on a wing. Officials said it would take two days of analysis to find out what it was. 
Late today, the crew stopped to talk before they left for home in Houston. On this mission, Catherine Sullivan was the first woman to take a spacewalk. And Sally Ride on the right made her second trip into space. We had a super flight. We enjoyed every bit of it. We just can't beat that experience. And I'm just looking forward to getting back in line and trying a second time. The landing here in Florida will help NASA keep to the schedule of a shuttle launch a month, which it is planning from now on. Challenger will now be prepared for a secret mission for the Department of Defense, which is scheduled for early December. The next shuttle launch will be a flight of discovery in early November.